All right, so in this podcast, we're going to really focus on electrolytes. Um, pretty much Gatorade has made billions and billions of dollars and paid lots and lots of athletes because they sell a drink that says, we replace your electrolytes. All right, We had a lab already this year where we kind of looked at electrolytes real briefly, but um, we're going to define electrolytes right now. So electrolytes... There's probably several ways we can define electrolytes, but probably the easiest way is just electrolytes um, are anything that produces free floating charges. All right, here's the main thing: free floating. charges in water. Alright, and by free-floating charges, um, if, if you remember in class or maybe from another podcast, uh, if we have a bunch of water molecules and we put salt in there, alright, remember the salts are going to grab and they're going to have some NaCLs, they're going to rip the NaCLs off, so we're going to have a bunch of water molecules that kind of are surrounding a sodium ion. And once they have that sodium ion off, it kind of removes that, and now our water molecules can get to some chloride ions. Okay, so we have a bunch of charges that are actually floating around in our water. All right, and because those charges are able to conduct electricity, we say this is an electrolyte. Okay, so I might add on to electrolytes anything that produces free floating charges in water um, and conducts electricity, and it can conduct electricity because of these free floating charges. Um, electricity is simply the flow of electrons, and if there are some charges that can carry our electrons from one place to another place, then we have what's called electricity. All right, we have a flow of electrons. So probably the easiest way for electrons to flow would be to grab one of these sodium ions because they're positive and electrons are negative, and those sodiums can take them from one place to another place. Okay. So the converse of that is also true. So non-electrolytes. Um, I might just say anything that does not produce free floating charges. Charges in water. All right, just the exact opposite thing. So in this case, uh, again, if you think back to our dissolving um, notes from class, uh, if we have sugar, okay, sugar is made up of carbons and hydrogens and oxygens. All those are non-metals, so it's a molecular compound, not an ionic compound. Because there's no charges, when we dissolve that, it just stays together as a molecule that's floating around. So there's no there's no anions, there's no cations, it's just a molecule which has no charge. All right. So because there's nothing there that can attract electrons or move electrons, these things do not conduct electricity. So anything that does not produce free-floating charges in water and does not conduct electricity would be a non-electrolyte. So anything that does not conduct in water. Okay? So we have electrolytes, we have non-electrolytes. Um, so we might be able to break this out a little bit more. All right? And we're actually going to break this into strong electrolytes. And we can have such things as weak electrolytes. And we can have non-electrolytes. So we're going to kind of summarize this in strong electrolytes are made of ionic compounds. Weak electrolytes are also made of ionic compounds. So in order to be any kind of electrolyte, you have to have ions. And those ions, especially the positive ions, can move electrons for us. And then non-electrolytes are known as, are made up of molecular compounds. Okay, so just a bunch of non-metals, non-metals, non-metals. You're going to get that from our last unit. All right, so strong electrolytes, we would say that most if not all, but most 
of the ion, or most of the ions, dissolve. Weak electrolytes, we might say some of the ions dissolve. And then non electrolytes, there are no ions. So we're just going to say instead of ions, the molecules, they do dissolve, all right? Molecules um, do not form ions. All right, and again we have strong, weak, and non. Um, the very last thing we're going to talk about is we can have such things as strong bases and weak bases. Similarly, we can have strong acids and weak acids. So if we have a strong acid, I'm just going to include this strong acid or base. This is equal to strong electrolytes. Conversely, weak acids and weak bases are known as weak electrolytes. Finally, summarize this by um, all acids begin with what element? They begin with hydrogens. Okay. So if you remember, hydrogens plus water yield hydronium ion, and hydronium is the Arrhenius way that we define acids. If something produces hydronium, it's an acid. So strong acids, pretty much our entire acid when we put it in water breaks up into hydrogen ions and whatever our anion is. All right most of our ions dissolve. Weak acids are much less dangerous. A common weak acid is vinegar. Okay, It's not quite as strong. We, we consume it, we, we, we eat it, we put it on our food, we drink it um, with our um, salad dressings. But in vinegar, very few of our acid molecules actually break into hydrogen ions and an anion, most of them stay together, all right? So there's very few ions that are actually able to conduct electricity. So these are known as weak electrolytes or weak acids. Similarly, we can have really strong bases and really weak bases. A strong base completely dissociates, most of those molecules separate, where a weak base, very few of them separate, all right? So, that, so weak and strong just has to do with how many ions you have floating around. If you have a lot of ions, it's strong. If you have very few ions, it's weak. And if you have no ions, it's a non-electrolyte. And um, that pretty much summarizes electrolytes.